So this morning, I went to my 16-year-old daughter's driving test. Mm -hmm. And she passed and I survived, so it ended well all the way around. I would like to ask a few of you to come up and address topics relating to your first experiences behind the wheel. So we're going to start with Bob Cattell, who is going to tell us who taught him how to drive and what the car was, his very first car. Bob Cattell. I was 12 years old, and my dad had just traded his Rambler, was going to trade his Rambler in, and he decided to give it to me to play in the back four acres behind our house. So he said, this is how it works, good luck, and he let me go. So I took off out the back. Before he went to clear the field, I didn't got the timing off a little bit, and so I hide centered on top of a, a plow. So he wasn't really happy, but that was my very first experience. But we got to do that for quite a while in the backyard, just going around and around. So I got really good at snow, because it snows in Buffalo. So the first time I was with the driver's ed teacher, he kind of went over and hit the gas in the snow, and I just left it down. Anyway, it was a blast. That's what happened. Thank you. <laughs> I love that. Um, Kevin Hart. I was going to say one, two minutes on the time. One, two, two minutes. Is what we're aiming for. Yes, thank you for, for that reminder. Kevin, would you like to come up? my road trips are flying. As some of you have heard from some of my speeches, I rack up all these points and I'm able to fly over. So I'll do a flying road trip, because I call that a road trip. And we got on a plane, I went to El Salvador. I went to, this was uh, last year, about a year ago, I went to El Salvador, went around, visited a bunch of people I know there for a couple of weeks, and got up that morning to catch my plane back home three and a half hours before we needed to get to the airport. And the traffic there is absolutely insane. No one lets you in, no one lets you out. There's always accidents. It's a very crazy country. So I'm riding with somebody that I know. His, his goal is to drop me off at the airport. And I pull up for my flight and I get there 55 minutes before the flight's supposed to leave. I walk up to the counter and the lady says, you're five minutes late. So down there I said, okay, I'll offer her 20 bucks. And I offered her, by the end I offered her $200 to let me get on the flight. And she was just a stickler. She wouldn't let me on the flight. The guy had already left who dropped me off. My cell phone didn't work. There was no Wi-Fi in the airport. So I knew I was about to miss the flight. So I grabbed a taxi. I went to the nearest hotel. I got on FaceTime. I called up my business partner because I had checked the flights. And to get out the next day or two was about $1,200 one way. It was so stinking late. Mm -hmm. So I called him, and luckily, me and him both do the points game. So he had a bunch of points. So he's able to, he, he can talk himself into anything. And he's able to call up American Airlines and work, a, work something out, work for 125 bucks and 25,000 points. So I was able to get on an airplane that afternoon. And when I got to Miami on my way back, customs, oh my gosh, it takes forever to get through. I couldn't believe it. I was there three hours before the layover, and I made the plane by about six minutes running. It was insane. So finally made it home at about one in the morning to Salt Lake, and that was my road trip story. In the state of Utah, a driver has to spend 30 hours practicing driving with a parent or with an adult guardian before they receive their license. Eric Roca has four beautiful daughters and a son, and he's had some experience teaching a child how to drive. We're going to invite him to come forward and tell us what every parent should know before getting in a car with an unlicensed child. Eric Roca. I have a beautiful daughter. She is 17 years old now. When she first started driving, she was about 15. She begged me since she was about 14 for me to just take her out driving. Every day, it was, Dad, please, can we go out and drive? Come on, Dad, please take me out. And I would say, no, you're not ready yet. Well, one Sunday after dinner, in the evening, she finally broke me down. She begged and pleaded with me during dinner, Dad, please, you've got to let me drive. I said, okay, let's go. So I drove around the corner from our house, and entered the church parking lot. 
and I thought this is the safest place for her to learn how to drive. So I would tell her, okay, turn right, turn left, and she would panic. She did not know her right from her left. So if there's one thing that your kids need to know is there between, <laughs> the difference between their right and their left, okay? So we quickly determined that Harry Styles was on the right and Liam was on the left. So anytime I said Liam, she would turn left. If I said Harry Styles, she would turn right. So we continued on this and we did figure eights and all through the parking lot, it was fantastic. She was doing wonderfully. I was so impressed, I thought, gosh, you know, I've already taught two kids how to drive and this might be the easiest one, she's amazing. And so I said, okay, we need to head back home. And I said, you know what, we are two houses down from where we live and I think you can drive us home. I think you're ready. She was really nervous. We got right to the edge of the parking lot. She looked both ways, just like she's supposed to. I guided her, I said, just turn the wheel, step on the gas, when you get out to the street, straighten it out, set your blinker to the left, oh, what was it? Liam. Liam, Liam, turn and we're home. I thought, it can't be any easier than that. So she proceeded, she started to turn, she stepped on the gas and she did not stop stepping on the gas. In fact, <laughs> she pressed a little harder on the gas and she forgot to do what? Straighten the wheel. So I am looking straight ahead and all I see is garbage cans. You know the big black ones? That's right, she plowed right through them. The guy had been painting his house for a week, so paint shot up in the air and went everywhere. Two inches thick of paint on the concrete that I got to clean up that day. <laughs>